Welcome to another video. Let's do another simple functional equation. Say we have f of x plus 1 over x is defined as x squared plus 1 over x squared. You know, typically my recommendation is just do a dummy substitution, replace this with t, and then when you're done, just switch the t back to x. That's what I would recommend that you do. But in the course of doing that, you're going to encounter a problem. And this provision was made so you don't have to deal with that problem. However, my first attempt at this problem did not require that I go the way of t. Because I could see that this is the mother of this. Okay, and that was the strategy I used. And I was wondering, why did they give me this condition? Then I decided to do the T substitution and discovered that this condition was necessary for me to have that. Okay, um, I would say the T, the T substitution is not your best option in this case. Let's get into the video. Now in solving this problem, I will not do the overcomplicated proof that there are no other functions, all that. I just want to do algebra, okay? I know there are many people who watch these videos who do a lot of math and they try to prove all the things that um, are necessary. Let's just get what f of x is. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is, I've seen this before, because I know that you can generate this from this by squaring this argument. So what I'm going to do is here, I'm going to say that consider x plus 1 over x squared. I just want to see because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create this. Okay, I want to see if I can create it from here. This is the same thing as x plus 1 over x times x plus 1 over x. You notice that if I distribute this, I'm going to end up with x squared plus x times 1 over x is 1. This times this is 1, and this is 1 over x squared. So as you can see, I have x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2. That's what I have on this side, x plus 1 over x, all squared. So it means if I go back to this function, I could actually say that f of x plus 1 over x is this. Well, let me just isolate this by moving this here. So I can say that x plus 1 over x squared minus 2 is equal to x squared plus 1 over x squared. I just move this over here. That means when the argument is x plus 1 over x, the output is 1 plus 1 over x squared minus 2. That is this. So I can say f of x plus 1 over x, which is what we have here, is equal to this, but this is represented as this, which is x plus 1 over x squared minus 2. So that means I can clearly say that when you give something to f, what does it do with it? It squares it and then subtracts 2 from it. So I can say, therefore, f of x is equal to x squared minus 2. This is the function. Now, why does it have to be this? Well, this is necessary because if you had done the t substitution replacing this, there's going to be a problem on the way. Um, not everybody would have done it this way. In order to make that valid, Let's just see what happens if we try to do a t-substitution and try to isolate x to go replace there. It's more complicated. So, let's see. So, let's say let t be equal to x plus 1 over x. From here, 
it simply means that um, t minus x equals 1 over x, tx minus x squared equals 1. You can form a quadratic equation from here, and that gives us, what do we have? We're going to get x squared minus tx plus 1 is equal to 0. So, you will need to solve a quadratic equation to get what x is, because remember, we have to write x in terms of t. And that is where you use the quadratic formula, because this cannot be factored. We don't know what t is. So we can say that x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared. So we say our minus b is just going to be t plus or minus the square root of b squared is going to be just t squared minus 4ac is just going to be minus 4 over 2a, which is just 2. Now, this is only real. Remember, oh, this solution is over the reals. It's a, it's a real function, real valued function. I forgot to say all of that, okay, from the beginning. So, if x is real, then this part has to be positive or at most, or at least zero. So, for this to be real, for the whole of x to be real, b squared minus 4ac has to be greater than or equal to zero. So, we have to put the condition that t squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to zero. And as you can see, t squared is greater than or equal to 4. Which means, if you take the square root of both sides, the absolute value of t must be greater than or equal to 2. And this is the condition that was here, in case you want to use your t substitution. But I didn't need to use it because I didn't go that way. This is for all x. Okay, this actually is true for all x, but just because of that constraint, greater than or equal to 2. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.